mentioned earlier about the maturation of marijuana bottle form movement. And I think this panel is one of the prima facie examples of such. And if you think about it, if you were 10 or 12 years old, November of 1996, and medical marijuana in California specifically was passed and became what it has been today, which has not been really replicated anywhere else in the United States for all intended purposes. So those individuals have more or less grown up. If you live here in the Bay Area, if you live in the Los Angeles Basin, if you live on the coastal communities outside of San Diego, then you have more or less grown up with legal marijuana in one form or another. When you're walking down the road, there's the bank, the 7-Eleven, the medical marijuana store. <laughs> and so, this panel explores that change of generation right now. Are kids more attracted to marijuana because it might be more readily accessed? Or, as many of us have observed, and certainly the parents on this panel, I think will acknowledge that just because you might use cannabis or that you might be in, engaged fully in reform of the laws, it doesn't mean your children are. So this panel really seeks to share this experience that we're living through right now. Um, and this panel came together mainly because Paul Montano on normal staff uh, brought up in, in one of the meetings that lead up to planning these saying, this has never really been talked about in the United States. This has not been reviewed in many sociological guides. So why not start that conversation right here at a normal conference? And our moderator today is really one of the best people to steward us through that conversation. Dr. Marshall Rosenbaum is one of the most gifted, talented, and respected researchers regarding drug use and adolescence. And she's recently, we use the term resigned, but she has ended her uh, experience and career full-time in the DPA to now get into another part of one's life that will hopefully be as fulfilling as the 40 years prior. Maybe she'll talk about it a little bit. But the idea here is that between Marsha and Amanda's research, Chuck's experience, the world Lauren has grown up in and organized. Uh, Jenny is certainly observing a world around her that many of us did not grow up in. And Dale and Mitch, as parents, as researchers, this is going to be an interesting topic today. So with no further ado, Dr. Marsha Rosenbaum. The title of this panel, The Legal Marijuana Generation, Growing Up in the Age of Legal Pot. Now, when I first read the title, I, I, I needed a little more definition. I still do. What, what exactly we mean by legal? Um, I called my 24-year-old son, who was 12 in 1996 when Proposition 215 passed, because he's my, he's kind of my laboratory. He's my data source, an N of one, Johnny. Um, I said, so how would you answer the question? Uh, what was it like growing up in the age of legal pot? He says, the age of legal pot? He says, has a pot always been legal? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, Johnny, it hasn't, and it still isn't in a lot of places, so be careful. Um, so, now, I, I, our first speaker, I'm going I'm to introduce Mitch, but before I introduce Mitch, Mitch has done some great, great things including publishing works that um, others, other academics might be afraid to publish. Let me, let me just give you an example. In 1996, when, the, when Prop 215 was passed, the very year after that, in 1997, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services, uh, in a uh, branch of the federal government, commissioned a study to see what the implications of Prop 215, medical marijuana in California, would be. What would happen? Presumably, the negative implications, specifically looking at young people. Um, you might remember that the drug czar, Barry McCaffrey, then it was chicken little, the sky is falling. This is going to increase 
uh, marijuana use by young people, a million fold, something like that. So they commissioned a study, the federal government, and it just so happens that my esteemed colleague, Rob Skater, um, is conducting this study. And so they run a study, he does a, a study in California here for the Attorney General every other year on, on student drug use. So they commission a study, Rod completes the study, and guess what he finds in 1997-1998? That drug use among young people in California actually leveled off if it didn't even drop. So this is what he found. And he waited for his report to be published, and he waited, and he waited, and he waited. And not only was it never published by the federal government, it was actually suppressed by the federal government. Now, finally the results of that study saw the light of day, because Mitch Earlywine, professor of psychology at SUNY Albany, published a book, which I, I wish I could hold up. It's called Pop Politics. It's a great book. And so finally, somebody had the guts to publish that study. And I know that Mitch is going to tell you, Mitch Earlywine is going to tell you about that and many other things. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Mitch Earlywine. 